Currently, is there a salary cap on football teams? Uh-huh. What is it in general? Is it a hundred, low hundred million? It's going up since so I left. So a hundred something million dollars. Yeah. Now, I interviewed a number of basketball players, right? And I remember I had a conversation with Rip Hamilton, you know, who used to play for a few teams, including the Bulls. He told me something okay. very interesting. He said, you walk into the NBA locker room, you have these players. What's the NBA salary cap, usually? It was at 90. It's going to be 90 now. Okay, so let's just say you have a room where these people are making $100 million a year, right? In the room, in that particular room, night after night, he doesn't remember a single time that him and his teammates talked about how they're investing their money. They would talk about the kind of car they got, maybe some jewelry they got, some chick they messing with, but at no point during any of the games, and he played for a while, did anyone actually talk business among each other. And this is a room of $100 million a year. Did you see the same thing in football? Um, I actually saw people talking about it uh, more than him, but... Certainly less than you expect, certainly less than desired. Uh, but think about it. We're getting sold that we're athletes. What, that, what does that mean? You're playing a child's game. What happens when you become an adult playing a child's game? You still think it's a game. You think it never ends. You think, right. it, you think you're good forever. Right. And the average career of an NFL player is? Three, four years. So that means, let's say 22, yep. you graduate college. Your career is done at 25 or 26. You're in your mid-20s. Like the whole majority of your life is ahead of you, and yet you no longer get a paycheck. Few people are lucky, like yourself, and manage to transition into, you know, talking about the game, you know, and using their experience to actually monetize it. But most guys, what happens after their career is done? Uh, for most guys, when the career is over, there's a struggle. There's a, a struggle for identity, a uh, struggle in that transition to find what's next, what's going to give you passion. Um, some guys are happy doing nothing and they're in a position too. Happy doing nothing? Yeah, there's some guys that are happy doing nothing in terms of just pure retirement. There are some guys I know that are happy, healthy, sound mind and body, retired. Very few, but I do know some. Um, just Meaning they made up. enough money to retire. Yeah. or They're budgeting their money. Budgeted, uh, spent their money properly when they were making a lot, bought the house, uh, took care of themselves. Uh, made sure that everything was paid off. So when you're done, I'm living off of this. Marshawn Lynch is a good example of this. Yeah, yeah, guys like that, exactly. Who didn't spend a lot of their money. Yep. And they're going to retire and be able to live rich for the rest of their life. Yep. What else do I need to buy? Because then, one, you're out of that phase of impression. Like, I ain't got to, no more Rolls Royces. Like me right now, I don't care how much money I make at ESPN. And I make, like, I make athlete money. I make money here like I used to play. Like, I beat the yearly income I used to make even when I played on some years. Not all them years. Come on, get your contract money up. Um, but um, what? I'm not buying no Rolls Royce. Like Uber, X, on top of that. You're out of that phase. So when you get to that place, it, it, it's an interesting place because guys need to talk more about it. But then you've got people around you that you trust. And you're like, I'm a specialist in football. I'm a specialist on the field. Let me let my people handle it. And, and it's weird because... We don't trust each other enough to share information. Therefore, guys get used, abused, and scandals occur. And then the people that work with us, it's weird. They feel that it's almost impossible to dumb it down enough, they feel like. So, so a lot of them don't put the effort towards it. They're just like, I have this. I got this. And it's, it's a sad state of reality because it continues to be a vicious cycle for guys who can't get out of it in terms of making sure they're good going forward. Well, I mean, I can tell you, the first time I started making real money, I assumed it was going to last forever. And I blew through it and went broke. And I had to be somewhat homeless and had to rebuild it. And it took a decade to rebuild. And going through this, it made me realize the second time around, I'm not going to let this happen again. But for most athletes, there is no second time around. It's the first time around. You know, because usually people who make it in professional yeah, sports, exactly. they know they're going to be going in that direction by the time they're in elementary school or so, right? So they're thinking, right. okay, I'm going to go towards this finish line, and boom, I made it there. And then it lasts three or four years. Then it's over. It's an inordinate amount of money. You, don't, you go zero to 100 real quick. <laughs> and, whoop, and then it's like... Back down to zero. Whoop, versus, I have friends, my best friends are Wall Street cats. I'm making, my first year, I got a half a million dollar contract. These suckers are making 80000 so they're like, you balling. You know, I'm, I, I, all right, all right. I'm making more money than all you guys combined. But then they learn how to live off of 80000 Then they learn how to live off of 110, 130, 150. So when they finally hit big and I'm coming out, I'm about to retire, these suckers making four or five million. 
And they're like, I spend only 100000 So that's how the game goes. It's not by race. I, I always try to dispel this myth because a lot of people think, oh, well, it's a lot of athletes. And a lot of athletes are black, so it's the black people problem. No. If you're young and you make money, you're, you're not a black person. You're young and you make money, you're going to spend it. Now, here's the thing. Don't, it's just like allowance. If you get it in ration, you will learn a rationale of how to spend it. It's just that simple. And these are all generalizations, but simply put, if the athletes were saved from themselves until they were in their mid-30s, late 30s, 40s, oh my God, it'd be a completely different world. Skip Bayless recently left ESPN. Mm -hmm. Were you and Skip close? Um, I haven't talked to him or seen him in a while, but I would say close in, his, in the sense of that friend, as soon as you see him, you just pick up where you, where you left off. Um, he was great to me when I used to travel back and forth to Bristol, which stopped like 2010. Um, I've seen him since then, but it's, it's been very few occasions. I love to do ultimate respect for him because his persona on TV is not who he is. He always looked out for me and others and was always gracious in making sure that you felt comfortable on his show and allowing you um, opportunities to shine. And more importantly, helped you if you wanted to learn the system of how to prepare. Love him. Why do you think he was such a polarizing figure in sports? Um, a few reasons. Uh, one, he's, his conviction was like he did everything he said as an athlete. And when you have that type of conviction, usually people are like, let me see that resume one more time. Oh, you just talking about it? And when him and Jalen Rose had their encounter, stuff like that, I think you got to add all these ingredients up. This dude is talking like he Michael Jordan in basketball, Barry Sanders in football. Like, what? And you're like, Hold on, you telling me this? And then sometimes they will be real athletes getting criticized, getting clowned. Two, um, the whole Tebow mania was crazy, and he was Tebow's biggest fan, and everybody were look, was looking at Tebow like, what? And this guy was like, no, he's good. And Tebow actually played well. If you really isolate his games, played, played well enough to validate that. But I think beyond that, we, we are attracted to people who believe in themselves, confidence. The ugly dude at the club with the pretty girl. Like, he was like, what? You should know. He believes. And I think Skip sold conviction and confidence more than anybody else. And then also, he was so well prepared. You, even if you disagree, you got to say, but damn, he made me think. He challenged me. And he never wavered. So all those things are elements of polarization. He wasn't a big fan of LeBron. Now, nah, I'm mad at him for that one. Now. <laughs> I mean, you, LeBron's never done a damn thing wrong. Um, exceeded expectations. I love that dude, LeBron. Love him. Why do you think he has an issue with LeBron? Um, probably like the old grandpa who just sees so much in you and you can never satisfy him. I mean, we've seen the movie. Some people live the existence where you just can never satisfy him. So as soon as you see the chosen one and I'm um, the king and, ah, oh, you... You're a king in my day. You call yourself king. You know what you got to do. You got to be perfect. And not, that's not even good enough. He wanted LeBron to walk uphill both ways to school. You know, like LeBron, outside of Jordan, LeBron's like, bring them all. I, I'm in that conversation. I think Skip looked at LeBron like, if you're the next coming, one, don't tell me about it. Just do it. And two, in our world today with social media and everyone is just, everyone has an opinion now. But, but everyone doesn't deserve a voice like that. Yeah, you can vote. I can't hear that. But everybody's just talking about everything. Like, it's just like, okay, and that's why I laugh at Twitter. I don't, I don't know if I love it or I don't hate it. I just laugh. Like, it's, I will never go, like, raw on Twitter. Like, I can't have a Twitter beef. Like, are you kidding me? There's real people dying in this world. I'm over here mad at your characters that you just typed. But I just laugh, like, when people... When the dude who just valeted you can write LeBron and say, you suck, and that actually has like a place, that's so weird, because it's like, dude, I don't suck, and you're wrong. And matter of fact, park my car. Like, what the hell? Like, I just don't get it. But I'm judgmental like that. I'm like, dog, if you're going to go there, you got to be somewhere, somewhere in there. And I think that's a, that's a funny place right now. I mean, I lost a few dollars in the finals betting against LeBron, but I felt like LeBron didn't have that killer instinct that like Jordan or Kobe had, where it's like when he came down the wire, you just give him the ball and they go right. win it for you, you know, because he had been in the finals a bunch of times, but he didn't win a bunch of times. Like, you know, Jordan won every time right. he went to the finals.
But he kind of well, surprised a lot of people this time around. Well, yeah. One, let's get some facts out there. Le- LeBron has been in seven finals. Only two has he been the favorite. Only two. Now, think about it. So that means the other five you were supposed to lose. And you know what? You lost four of those five. And one of them you won when you're supposed to. You weren't supposed to. Blah. Whatever. Still, if you're that great, beat. go against the odds. Go right. against all odds. I get it. Um, his killer instinct is different. Like, with that body type, it, it's, the, it's the curse of the gifted. And I've seen it a thousand times with tremendous athletes. No one is perfect. No elements are perfect. Um, you think about it, you're like, oh, my God. Jordan, he's perfect. He never lost in the finals. He never went to a game seven. He did take two years off, though. Now, you call that what you want, but in the middle of his highest success, he said, er, got to step away from this for whatever reason. There's conspiracy theories. There's real ones. But if I'm racing you and halfway you say, hold on, I'll be right back. Huh? We're still running. But I'll leave that alone. No one's perfect. Magic Johnson lost four finals. He went to nine. No one's perfect. Kobe has lost in the finals. Kobe's had his dark years. These are all the greatest ever. LeBron is just LeBron. LeBron is a facilitator who doesn't want to go to dark places for, because of his upbringing. He doesn't want to go to that place where he went on Steph Curry. You know, grew up without the father and the, the Akron, the real raw. He doesn't want to go there. As I don't like to go to that dark place too. So I'm so happy. I'm happy because I've escaped that. And don't take me back there because I'll go there. And then you'd be like, damn, why did we go there? Steph Curry, Golden State, they talking about he's the best player, the best team ever. LeBron said, on my watch, on my throne, I'm the king. And guess what he did? Steph punked him. He just went at him. He just said, you want to walk down the street to the championship. I want to go in this alley. You coming? And Steph didn't want to go in that alley. Now, Jason Terry did that to LeBron in 2011 with the Dallas Mavericks. He said, LeBron, let's go in this alley. LeBron didn't want to go in that alley. It happens, man. But once you get beat up, one thing you're going to learn is how to fight. <laughs> now, Derrick Rose just got drafted to the Knicks. Yeah, he got traded. And, uh, I'm sorry, he got traded to the Knicks. And as soon as that happened, the memes just were going crazy. Like, you know, Derrick Rose hurt himself boarding the plane. Like, you know, he was tying his shoes. He broke his leg. Like, you know, they had these pictures up. And you see him lining up the airport. It's ridiculous. That's how the game goes now, man. I love it. Like, that's all I post on social media is, like, memes. Like, one, we're playing a game. Two, it ain't serious. Like, please don't take any offense to it. I go at my favorite team, the Clippers, when it's their time to go down and they lose in the second round or whatever. I go at my favorite players. I go at my homeboys. I don't care because you can come back at me. All right, we just have fun. It's hilarity to me, but if that's the worst that happens to these athletes, good job, athletes. We're in a great place because the worst is somebody thinks of you, puts your head on some other person's body or some other scene and says, oh, look at you. You're hurt again. Huh. I'm, I laugh it off, all of it, um, and it, it magnifies their 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 brand. It, it just keeps them in, in the news cycle. So, all love for the memes, no doubt. I mean, do you see Derrick Rose working out with the Knicks? His look, his if you isolate his numbers post All Star last year, they were MVP caliber in terms of when he won the MVP. Like it was like comparable numbers. You're like, whoa, this is Derrick Rose looking like he get, he's back, but. The best ability is availability. Trent Dilfer. Now, is he going to be available? Is he going to play 82 games? Yeah, this is why I think his sneakers don't sell all that well. I remember they put up this cast, like, you know, the limited edition. Yeah, like, it's hard. Like, big man is hard to sell their shoes. Shaq shoes, stop. You know, like, I ain't seven feet. Well, I'm going to wear those. There's profits, and then there's, like, how much are you a part of, like, the mindset of the market, that marketplace. And, it's, it's, we know what the game is. It's those wing players, those fresh players, or players that stay healthy, or Steph Curry, LeBron. Kyrie. Kyrie. Ooh, Kyrie's next. <laughs> I got news for anybody thinking that it's going to go LeBron and then Steph, LeBron and then Russell Westbrook. It's going to be Steph, Westbrook, and Kyrie saying, give it to me. Give it to me. So when you left high school, you had a chance to play on a lot of big schools. But you actually chose Columbia, which is an Ivy League. And their record was in the trash. The definition you gave was really dope, was that, you know, a lot of players choose a team strictly for football, strictly for sports, but you actually looked at getting an Ivy League education? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I had to make that decision. One, I just felt the responsibility. I owe my family too much to, to not go just after my ego stroke of being in a big football program and on ABC and 
Whoa, Nelly, and you know, Rose Bowl, all that. Oh, it seduced me, trust me. But I, I knew, what if I blew out my knee my freshman year? What if I just weren't, wasn't as good as advertised? I need that education. And to me, it's a simple formula. I tell all the kids this. I said, I tell my daughter, US News and World Report, what's the academic ranking? And then give me this damn, OK, this football, basketball track, what do they rank? Add those two scores up. The one with the lowest, maybe that's the one you should go to, the lowest of the two. So football, Columbia wasn't even ranked 100 something. But guess what they're ranked academically? Four in the world. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And I just needed that advertisement, which is basically what the college experience turned into for me. Not one person has ever asked for my GPA. Not one person really cared about what I majored in other than, oh, this is good cocktail talk. But the reality is they all think I'm intelligent, whether I say a word or not, whether I am or not. Because you have an Ivy League degree. You have an Ivy League education. I said, damn it. Once I walk around with these muscles and this high, people say, you play football. They think a certain thing. Well, I'd rather them think I'm intelligent because that's going to take me a lot more places than just these muscles. And that was just the choice I made. Somewhat of a sacrifice, but huge rewards from it. I mean, I can tell you, I went to Berkeley and I would hang out in these sports tutoring centers and I would see Jason Kidd and like whoever else during that time. No one was studying. No one was really going to classes. People were just playing sports, especially uh -huh. star players. Why do you think there's so little emphasis on education yeah. for athletes? Which is really a catastrophe, I feel. Because you go to college, you have all the resources. You can get whatever degree you want for free. Well, I think, as, it, it, I think what they do, the colleges and that entire system, from the pro level all the way down, is they attack the human element. Which I think one of our human conditions is to get the most for doing the less, like, to do the least. Like we all... What? A lotto ticket? Why do you think lotto tickets used? And who buys them? The poor people. <laughs> poor people buy them trying to get the most. You want to get the most doing the least. They, and when in college, if they say, hey, you got two roads. You can go this road and take this poli sci course and go to sleep and wake up and try and get an A and it's going to kill you. Or take this road. Somebody's going to help you. You're going to get a C, C plus. You ain't going to learn a damn thing, but you'll be fresh for the games. The human element is going to say, and I don't need poli sci in my life. I don't need it. I don't need this degree. I'm not going anywhere with it. They just, and they catch you at 17. You're 17 years young. You're not thinking. You know, you're, you're thinking as deep as what's better, fat burger in and out. Like, that's it at 17. You're not going hardcore like, no, I can't let you sabotage my future, my education. And they catch you when you're young. And the next thing you know, you realize you wasted a lot of precious moments and opportunities. 